Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here's Google Apps updates roundup number 57. In this episode I'm going to share with you about 15 new features in Google Apps so let's find out what's new. So let's start with Google Photos and the memories got a complete revamp. So here's one of the memories I have and the first thing you will notice is that rounded corners all the photos will appear in a frame with rounded corners. On top of this, you can pause the memory or you can pause the slideshow by tapping and holding on any of the photos like this. And you will get a label here at the top right corner says auto play is off. So you can enjoy looking at the photo without the need to hold your finger on the screen. And if you want to resume the playback, you can simply tap anywhere. As you see also each and every photo will have this zoom in and zoom out effect which makes the memory look, look more dynamic. At the bottom left corner you will see some information like the date and the location of the photo. Also the name of the memory will be written over here. You will no longer be able to dismiss the memory by swiping down because now you can switch between memories by swiping up and down. So this gesture is now reserved for another purpose. But if you want to dismiss the memory you can use the X at the top left corner or the normal back gesture of your phone. Uh, also if you want to switch between photos you can use the tap on the sides like we used to but what's new here is the ability to also swipe left and right to switch between photos. Uh, to access the info pane you will not be able to do it by swiping up like we used to but you need to tap on the ellipses button in this case to access the info pane. And I think this new design looks better and it feels more dynamic while checking your memories. So I'm a big fan of it. So please let me know what do you think in the comments. Next, the phone app. And now we have a redesigned dialer. You will see all the options are now at the bottom of the screen for easier access. You can activate the keypad, mute, unmute, turn on the speaker. And if there are more options, you have here a more button that will expand the more options for you. And that's pretty much it. That's the only change that we got in the phone app. And I think it's better than before. Next, Google Messages. And we got one of the Pixel 7 features on the Pixel 6 family, which is the audio message transcription. So here I have an audio message. And as you see, I have view transcript. And when I do this, I can read the content of the audio message. And this is a very useful feature for many reasons. First, maybe you are in a meeting, maybe you are in a noisy environment, or the audio message is too long and it's easier for you to read it instead of wasting two or three minutes to listen to it. Also, you have here a quick shortcut that will take you to the feature toggle so you can turn it on or off. And the other way to do this is by going to your message settings and you will see a new menu item here called the voice message transcription. So I do really like this feature and I hope to see it in third party apps like WhatsApp and Telegram because that will make our life much easier. Now let's move on to Google Contacts and now we have a new integration between the Contacts app and the Google Assistant. So for example, if you have any of your contacts added under the Your People page in Google Assistant settings, if you are not familiar with this feature, it will simply allow you to add certain people and specify the relationship with them. So you can make it easier to use voice commands to call them, set reminders or get notifications about their birthdays. If you already did that action, and then open Google Contacts and open one of these contacts, scroll all the way down, you will see a new card here for Google Assistant. The first option is called the Manage Settings, which will take you right away to the Your People page where you can add or remove people if you want. You have here the name pronunciation shortcut, which will allow you to hear how Google Assistant pronounce the name of the contact. Ahmed Nagy. And that will make it easier for you when you use voice commands. You have here the uh, relationship and finally the address. Next, Google Maps. And we got a new location sharing feature and here I have the Pixel 6a to show you how it works. So let's say you want to share your location with a specific person. So I'm gonna choose the Google account on the other phone and then tap on share and give it some time until it appears over here. So now the Pixel 6 Pro location appears on the other phone. So let me show you the new feature. And when I tap on the bubble, now I have a new menu item called notifications and I have an add button. Tapping on it will allow me to get notified every time this person arrives or leaves the location. I can choose the current location of this person or add another location if I want. And once I hit save, it will tell me that the other person will be notified about activating this feature. So once I hit the save button, 
I will get a notification here on the other phone saying they added a notification to know every time you arrive at and leave. This feature will be useful if you want to keep an eye on your kids and I'm really glad that Google added this new notification system. Next, the Google app. And the first change is the new choose your interests card that you will find in the discover feed. You can scroll through the interests horizontally and that will make it easier for you to choose what kind of content you want to see on the go without the need to go into settings, which is a nice touch. The second change is in the Google app search widget. It got a lot of customizations. So let me show you how it works. Here you have an edit button once you add the widget to the home screen. When you tap on it, you will get a totally separate page to customize your widget. Starting from the Google logo, you can choose the letter G or the full word if you want. Here you have the ability to choose the shape. You have a pill shaped design, rounded rectangle or a rectangle with sharp edges. You can also change the color so for example, you can choose uh, the uh, Google colors, you can choose the black color, you can make it dark, or you can choose a totally different custom color. As you see here, you have saturation and you have different hues. And at the end, you have one more option to choose the transparency and that will make it look gorgeous. As you see here, it will show the background behind the widget and I do really like this option and once you finish you can tap on the save button and this is how your search widget looks like. I do really like this approach and I hope Google will implement this to more apps and more widgets like the clock and Google Photos that will be great. Talking about widgets, Google Drive also got a new shape for the quick actions widget. This is the old one we used to have, but now when you make it bigger, you will get this new circular design with six options instead of only four like the old design. Next, Google Fit. And now you can sync your health data from third party apps like Samsung Health and Withings Health Mate into your Google Fit with the help of Health Connect. And the first thing you will see when you open Google Fit in the home page is the wizard to set up this feature. So when I tap on get started, it will first show me how it works. And when I tap on setup, I can choose what kind of data I want to synchronize. In my case, I want to only synchronize the sleep data from my health mate app, which is uh, created by Withings. And when I tap on allow and done, I should be able to see my health uh, or my sleep data from the Withings app. So let me try to check that out and show you a sample. So as you see here, this data is from my HealthMate app by Withings, and I can see it here inside my Google Fit. And this will be a, a good feature. And instead of using multiple apps, you can only use one app to show you all the information you need to know. Next, Google Chrome. And now when you tap on the address bar, you will see a carousel with the recently visited websites. The websites included here are the same websites you will see when you open a new tab. If you take a look here, these websites are exactly the same ones that will appear when you tap on the address bar while having another website open. The second change is in the tabs count. Now I have three tabs open and when I go inside, you will see two grouped tabs plus one separate tab. Previously, the same situation will only show you two tabs, not three. But now Google Chrome takes in consideration the group tabs and add them to the counter. Next, if you have a Pixel phone and then go to settings, sound and vibration, and then phone ringtone, you will see a brand new category called natural elements that includes 12 new ringtones. The same thing applies to the default notification sound. You will see another 12. And finally, under the default alarm sound, you will get another 12, which is a total of 36 new sounds. This new change took place after the update Google pushed to the Sounds app. Last but not least, the Pixel 7 wallpapers are finally here. They are extracted from the latest wallpaper and the style app, and all of them look gorgeous. I already have one of them set on my phone, and I do really enjoy how it looks. There are 12, I think, in total. Uh, so yeah, there are 12 new wallpapers and I'm gonna leave that download link in the description below if you want to have them on your phone. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you today. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any new feature in Google Apps to include in my future videos. But for now, thank you so much for watching and see you the next video.